County as, as one of the most negative person in the whole county. I mean, he couldn't find anything ever to be thankful for, anything to ever be positive about. The man sat down in the barber shop and the guy, you know, wrestled up with the, the uh, thing that goes around the neck and got him all ready. And, and the guy was, was just really thrilled because he said, I'm getting ready to go to Europe in a couple of days, so give me a good haircut. The barber says, Europe, where are you, where are you going? He says, we're going to first stop uh, at London. And uh, that's be our first stop. And the, the barber interrupts him and says, oh, you're going to hate London. <laughs> London is so noisy and it's dirty and it's very, very expensive. You, you, you'll, just, you'll just hate it. I know that you'll just hate it. Where are you going next? Well, I said, then our next stop is going to be in Paris. Paris, that's even worse. Paris, the people are so rude. They're so rude. They're not nice. It's just awful. Then where are you going? Well, our last stop is Rome. Rome? Oh, no. It is terrible there. The food is terrible there. And let me give you a bit of advice. Don't even go to the Vatican. It's like going to Disney World. It's standing in long lines. And just forget seeing the Pope at all. It is so hard to get. He's inaccessible. So don't even think about even getting close to him. Oh. After he left the barber shop, he began to wonder, wow, should I even be going? But, well, he took off on his trip. He had a uh, wonderful time and came back and couldn't wait to tell the barber. So the barber, you know, lifts up the, the thing that goes around your neck and begins to chip away and says, well, how was your trip to, 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 to Europe? And he says, well, you know, we found London. London was the most exciting city that we ever been into our life. It was just wonderful, and, and really it wasn't as expensive as you said it was. And then we went on to Paris, and it was better than you even described. It was, it was, a, it was just the best. The people were so nice, and they showed us wherever we needed to go and, and such. And then we could have asked for a, a better climax for our trip when we went to Rome. Oh, the food was delicious, and you won't believe we had a, a, a private visit with the Pope. We did. We had a private, we, we got in there, and the Pope greeted us all in our, our native language, and, and then he, he got to me, and he asked me to kneel, and, and I thought, wow, he wants to give me a blessing. So I kneeled there, and then he placed his hands on my head, and he blessed me. I couldn't believe he blessed me. And then he got over to my ear, and he whispered in my in my ear in, in plain English, you got the worst haircut I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you all know people who just want to spoil everything. Who, who just can't find anything good about anything. And yet, we move into the season of Thanksgiving and it's a time to be thankful. To remember where our blessings come from. And I can't think of better scripture than to turn to, to Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. It's interesting how our Thanksgiving holiday came about. You see, we marked the first Thanksgiving in, in 1621 when, when the English pilgrims had, had weathered a, a horrible year. Of, of, of leaving Europe in order to find an opportunity for religious freedom. They gathered to, to have that first, first Thanksgiving and the Indians came bringing food and bringing gifts of food as a way of, of showing their, their fellowship and their friendship that, that they were offering to the pilgrims. But it was almost a hundred years later before we even began instituting uh, the season of Thanksgiving. To George Washington, in the midst of the Revolutionary War, when, when we had won the, the Battle of Saratoga, proclaimed that there would be a day of thanksgiving, for they had won a battle. And then after the Revolutionary War, when the Constitution was ready to be ratified, 
He asked that there be a day of thanksgiving, for they were a nation to be proud of, and they were to give thanks as a nation to God. And just to show that there were politics even back then, as he went to the Continental Congress to, to, in order to, to be able to do this, he said, let's make this a national holiday for every year. And they denied him. So that Thanksgiving was, was only held just that one time. And then almost a hundred years later, in the midst of the Civil War, in 1863, Abraham Lincoln, in order, in order to, to rise the morale of, of, of the northern states in the midst of the bloody Civil War, proclaimed a, a day of thanksgiving, a day that they would pause and give God thanks, but also to gather with families and, and to remember the blessings that God had given to them in order to, to raise the morale of, of the northern people. So they began and instituted an annual thanksgiving. But it was nearly 40 years later the beginning of the 1900s, that that became a, a tradition of our nation. That it became traditional across our nation to celebrate the, the last Thursday of November as the day of Thanksgiving. And that was greatly due to the Southerners who thought that the Northerners were trying to stuff not only the turkeys, but also to stuff a, a holiday that was um, about a celebration of the great men that the Northerners had on, on the Southerners. So it was 40 years later before we had what we call our, our day of Thanksgiving. A day that, was, that we gathered with family and friends around the table to celebrate that which God had given to us. We are an interesting nation. Thanksgiving really has its roots in the 1621, in a time after the pilgrims had lost most everyone that had ventured across the Atlantic Ocean. At a time of distress, they paused to, to give thanks. George Washington calls for a day of, of thanksgiving in the midst of the Revolutionary War, and Abraham Lincoln calls for that, that day of thanksgiving in the midst of the bloody Civil War. It seems as though it's in those times of distress that, that those who are our leaders are calling upon us to be grateful. We are a nation that is very interesting. It is when times are rough, when we're feeling distressed, that we are grateful. But yet, when things are going good, even the simple things of life, the simple pleasures of life, we, we take for granted. This last week, um, Friday, with the terrorism that, that attacked Paris, it took me back, especially as they were making those, those, those proclamations and those, those the, the news people were, were comparing it with 9-11 in our nation. It took me back to 9-11. And how after 9-11, we were a nation that were on our knees again. We're a nation that were filling the churches. We're a nation that were going to God. And I can remember that, that first Thanksgiving. Today, as I, I read from the, the 100th Psalm, it is a, a psalm that is perfect for this day and for remembrance. Because we are, I believe, in a time of stress and deep concern. If we're not, we should be. When the French president says that we are at war, it means that we are at war. And that we'll be facing this challenge of terrorism for a long, long time. And we need to be a nation that is together unified, a nation that knows where our blessings come from. There's 150 psalms that we read, and if we know that the psalms are really the hymn book of the Jewish people, I wasn't really made aware of that until I went and, and, and saw the, um, the, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And there you can see in, in handwritten scroll of the, of the psalms the, the notations that the choir master would have used in, in, in leading the people in, in the singing of the, of the psalms as a hymn. There are, hymns, there are hymns of thanksgiving, there are hymns seeking comfort, there's hymns of praise in, in the midst of this. The longest the longest psalm is, is, is 119. 
and the shortest one is 117. And an interesting fact is that 118 is the exact chapter what marks the middle of the Bible. Everything before it is in the middle, in, on the, in the beginning, and everything behind. So 118 is is the right in the middle of that. 119 is the is the oldest of the, I mean, the longest of the Psalms. It's actually the longest chapter in the Bible. A woman by the name of Henrietta Hewitt, when she was dying on her deathbed um, in in Nevada, she's also the great aunt of of, of uh, Paul Rhodes, who is, uh, um, you know, the head coach of our not so great Cyclones. But as she was on her deathbed, she, I would come daily and read scripture to her, and and I said, you know, I've, I've been picking scripture. Henry, what would you like to, for me to read to you? She said, I want you to read to me Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible. It said to me that she wanted me to stay a while, to be there. Psalm 100 is a, a psalm of thanksgiving. It's talking about, let us enter the gates with thanksgiving. It is, it is a psalm that basically is to be sung as we enter the doors of the sanctuary, thrilled about being here, remembering about God's love and his patience, that his love will endure forever to all generations. So it's a beautiful psalm that we read oftenly often during Thanksgiving season. But sometimes it takes something like 9-11 or terrorist attacks in Paris for us to remember what it is all about and to be thankful. So this week I was, I was looking back at an email that, that fluttered around that Thanksgiving after 9-11 after, uh, because I thought it would be appropriate for us to think about. It's called um, "What a Day, a Day Makes a Difference." So, if you put yourself back, those of you who are old enough, on Monday we emailed jokes. On Tuesday we did not. On Monday we were fussing about prayer at school. On Tuesday we have, would have been hard pressed to find a school where someone was not praying. On Monday our heroes were athletes. On Tuesday, we relearned who heroes are. On Monday, we were people trying to separate us by, by race, sex, color, and creed. On Tuesday, we were holding hands. On Monday, we were irritated that our rebate checks had not arrived. On Tuesday, we gave money away gladly to people that we had never met. On Monday, we were upset that we had to wait five minutes in a fast food line. On Tuesday, we stood in line for three to five hours to give blood for the dying. On Monday, we urged, argued with our kids, we argued with our kids to clean up their rooms. On Tuesday, we couldn't wait to get home fast enough to hug our kids. On Monday, we were at work. We went to work as usual, and Tuesday we went to work, but some of us didn't come home. On Monday we had families, and Tuesday we had orphans. On Monday, September 10th, life felt routine. On Tuesday, September 11th, it did not. <coughs> this morning is an assignment for you as you prepare yourselves for for your Thanksgiving meal, I'd like for us to be thinking about not so much about what we're thankful for, the things that we're thankful for, but to look around the table as you sit, to look along the room, or if you're on the adult table, to be able to look over to the children's table, whatever that may be, to look at the eyes of those who are around those tables and to be thankful for those people that are in your lives and how they make a difference and how God has blessed you by placing them in your life. It's important for us, so important for us, to remember God and his love that endures all our generations. Let us pray.
Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the life that you have given to us and all that you have blessed us with. Lord, as we look into the eyes of those we share this Thanksgiving with, let us be thankful, for in them is the example of your love for us. It is not so much in the things that we have and own, but more importantly, it's the people that we share this life with that we say thanks. Thank you for sharing this life with us through your Son, Jesus Christ who taught us about what really matters in life. So let us celebrate love this Thanksgiving. Amen.